Are you concerned about your butt wink? In this episode, we're going to explain to you what the butt wink is, if it matters, and ways that you can improve on your butt wink today. Welcome back guys, this is Dr. Arash Miksudi. Dr. Craig Lindell. And today we're going to be talking about the butt wink. So let's first talk about what doesn't cause the butt wink and then go into what causes it. So what doesn't cause the butt wink is hamstring tightness, unless maybe we're talking about a deadlift where you're going into full hip flexion. But when we're talking about squats, that's not usually the issue. Also, strength is not usually the issue. It typically comes down to either a mobility deficit of the hips or a lumbopelvic control issue. And let's break those two things out. We're gonna have Craig go through a ton of different repetitions and we'll, we'll break those two things out so you can get a better understanding of what causes what. So Craig, let's Three, go. not tucked in shirt, in shorts. <laughs> we got Craig with his shirt tucked in so that way we can see the pelvis motion. So let's go through a full range of motion squat here, Craig. My lined up, yeah, We're lined up. Perfect. So we see Craig's good at the bottom. He gets this posterior pelvic tilt and lumbar spine rounding, which is perfectly normal at an end range position. Now what's happening is Craig goes into the squat, let's hold the end, is that his hips are running out of range of motion. So when the head of the femur hits the acetabulum, his pelvis tilts posteriorly. And because of that, his lumbar spine is going to flex. This is a normal position to be in at end range. This is because of hip mobility. Now if Craig comes back up, and let's say Craig goes into a lumbopelvic flexion while he's going through the squat, so your posterior tilting while you're going through it. Now this is more of a control issue. Come back up and fall into that position before you get to end range. That is more of a control issue. So Craig is really good at squatting and that feels awkward for him because he has better control than that. Now if it's an end range thing, all that tells us is the hip mobility is running out of range of motion, the pelvis has to move, and the lumbar spine flexes. Now what we'll do is break down ways that you can improve hip mobility and or lumbopelvic control depending on what your issue is. All right guys, so if hip mobility was an issue, here's an easy stretch that you can do to improve your hip mobility. What Craig is doing here is getting into this runner's lunge position and he's just sinking deep into it trying to get as low as he can, and he's even performing some circles, finding his own restrictions. This is working on that right hip mobility. So you can see how that right hip is going into a ton of flexion, but his left hip is staying in extension, so that's making sure that he doesn't compensate. A lot of times when people do hip stretches, they may compensate and use their low back a ton. This will lock out the pelvis a little bit more so. But I do wanna let you guys know, there's not great evidence to support that just doing hip mobility in itself will help with the butt wink at the bottom position. If you do have back pain at the bottom position of your squat, other things that you can do are increase your heel height. That'll make sure that you go into less hip flexion. Maybe open up your stance a little bit, which will take a little bit stress of, off the hip and make sure you can go into more hip flexion. And then also what you can do is go through less range of motion when you're doing your squats. So these are things that you can adjust, but I would recommend starting out with some hip mobilizations and see how that feels. And if that makes sense, let us know, put a comment down below on what strategy that you may be like, or if you do have a butt wink, is your issue more of a mobility issue or a control issue? Now, if lumbopelvic control is your issue, here are a few different ways that you can improve on that. So first, what Craig is gonna do here is find a neutral spine. He can arch, he can tuck, find the end ranges, and then from there find what he feels like is relatively his neutral. Now, once he's found his neutral, he's going to hinge back, pushing, onto his heels and you're going to see how he's going into hip flexion while making sure he can keep this relatively neutral spine and we'll talk about is this bad or not later on but he's keeping that relatively neutral position making sure that he can control that as he goes into hip flexion now this is in an unloaded position he's not weight bearing so once he's mastered this we'll get up into a loaded position now craig let's challenge yourself a little bit more by standing up, let's grab a kettlebell, make this a little more challenging, and we'll use a counterbalance actually. If he uses a little bit of weight as a counterbalance, that'll, that'll make it easier for him to make sure he can keep that neutral position. Okay, right there, good. So if he's right, so it's like a goblet squat basically. If he wants to reach his arms out, that's even more of a counterbalance, hard on the shoulders, but point is that it makes it easier to keep that neutral position. And you can see here how Craig is doing a great job. 
Now, when working on control, what we want to focus on is going slow. You want to really control the movement. That's the whole purpose of, of these drills here. So he can even hold the end range position like this. I like that. Making sure he understands um, where, what he's feeling. He can even arch and tuck if he wants at his end range position to make sure he feels it. He probably my, my legs are just tired. That's why I'm hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> he's fatigued. And also, that was his end range position. I wouldn't imagine him being able to arch much once, he, once he's at that bottom position. So once he's got a good understanding of how to maintain the position here, now let's challenge him with his initial concern. If that was a barbell back squat or a barbell deadlift, let's replicate that movement. So perfect, perfect setup here. We got a barbell, and what Craig is going to do is now perform barbell back squats. Now barbell back squats require a little more of that hip flexion, which is why it's a little harder to maintain that neutral position from both a hip mobility and a lumbopelvic control standpoint. And Craig is doing a great job here. Again, we're doing this very slow. You can even do a tempo squat where you go five seconds down, five seconds up, very slow and control and make sure you can keep that neutral position. And then going off of that, let's get into what neutral is. Does neutral matter? Is butt wink really a bad thing in just a second? Is butt wink a bad thing? Let's have Craig answer this one. Well, I'm glad that my shirt's untucked and now Rashi's shirt's untucked <laughs> in because now it's time to make him move through some stuff and we can talk about it. So the bump wink, easiest way to break it down is two things. Are you dealing with any pain or limitations and how deep do you have to go with the squat? So Rush, squat to the depth that you feel like you're not butt winking versus do a few squats to the point that you are butt winking. So with most people, like Rush talked about, at a certain point, depending on your anatomy, you are bound to butt wink. And that's okay, as long as you can control going into it and going out of it. People get more concerned about it when there's a lot of load on the spine, especially if you can't control it. And sometimes that can end up getting associated with low back pain or SI joint pain or discomfort. So if you can't control it, then okay, Arash, let's limit it to the depth that you can limit any butt winking from happening. So if you're dealing with any issues where you feel like butt winking is the reason why you're dealing with pain or limitations or you can't train, then limit the depth that you're going to. You just learned all these different drills and all these different techniques to work on controlling your butt wink, identifying when the butt wink happens. But at the end of the day, there are no absolutes. There, 100% of the time, butt wink is not going to be good. 100% of the time, a butt wink is not going to be bad. It just totally depends on the scenario. But the big takeaways are, if you can control it, and you want to go that low, awesome, go for it. But if you're dealing with pain and issues, then take away, from the, dr then take away the drills and the techniques from this video and limit your butt wink. All right, guys, so to recap, a butt wink can be either because of a hip mobility issue or a lumbo-pelvic control issue. If your concern is the hip, the low back, or even squatting, we have programs on all of these topics. Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure to tune in next Tuesday for your next prehab episode. Make sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video.